V and I have always done things a little bit differently. So when it was time to plan our trip to celebrate 10 years of being together, we wanted to do something a little bit out of the norm. And what says out of the norm better than staying on the tiniest houseboat that we've ever seen? Our experience with tiny houseboat adventures began at St. John's Marina South in DeLand. We weren't exactly sure where to go when we first got there, so we decided to take a look around. And that's when we got our first glimpse of the tiny houseboat. After a quick text message to Rick and Carrie, who are the owners, they let us know that they had just finished cleaning our boat and they were bringing it out to the dock. And here it is, home for the next two days. Before we set sail, there was a decent amount of paperwork to fill out and there was a lot of information that we needed to go over. You need to be on your A game for this adventure. Being able to drive a boat and having solid navigational skills are a must. After checking out the appropriately named poop deck and the rest of the amenities, it was time to get the rest of our stuff on board and get ready to shove off. After a quick refresher course on how to tie dock lines and a driving test to make sure I knew what I was doing, we said goodbye to Rick and we were off on our adventure. These tiny boats are really easy and quite fun to drive. I'm not going to lie, when we were going through all of the maps and instructions earlier, it was a little bit intimidating. But once I got behind the wheel and started putting all the information to use, I felt comfortable enough to switch hats and transform into the captain. Here's some more information about the boats. They're called Nomads and they were actually built way back in the 1960s to 1970s. If you try this and you fall in love with tiny houseboat life, you're in luck because Nomad still makes tiny houseboats. Even though there are more modernized versions, Tiny Houseboat Adventures mainly specializes in renting out the classics. So you need to keep that in mind and be careful when you're driving it because you're basically driving an antique. We started off our voyage by making a left out of the harbor. The first destination that we wanted to hit was Blue Springs State Park. It's only about 7.2 miles away from the harbor, but it seems like a bit more of a drive because these boats have a top speed of right around seven miles an hour. So with the throttle all the way down, we slowly made our way towards our destination. Driving the houseboat seriously reminded me of the Jungle Cruise at Disneyland. Everything from the sound of the engine to the way that the boat handled. I always thought that that would be a really fun job, so driving this boat gave me a chance to live that dream for a little bit. And not only did I drive it, but Captain V spent a fair amount of time behind the wheel as well. She really impressed me. I know that she's a woman of many talents, but I had no idea that she was so good at driving a boat as well. The route to Blue Springs is pretty simple and straightforward. And soon we could see it start to appear on the horizon. Blue Springs does not have a dock for us to tie up to. So we ended up having to bring it in and tie it up to a couple of trees on the shore. This was our second visit to Blue Springs State Park and we really enjoy it here. If you want to see the first video we made about riding the tube here, you can click in the upper corner right now. At the time of the recording of this video, there was a $2 per person entry fee if you come into the park by boat. If you come in by car, it's $6 per car, so we got a pretty sweet deal. I'm sure that you noticed all of the black vultures a second ago. You need to be sure to close all of the doors on the boat because they are very mischievous and they will get into everything. We didn't plan on spending a ton of time here because we still had a lot that we wanted to see. One thing we did want to do, however, was take a dip in the crystal clear water and cool off. That is probably one of the only negative things about this experience. You can't just jump off the boat whenever you want to take a swim. Doing that could result in you being an alligator's lunch. And here we are at the swimming area. Please note that you cannot swim here all year round. In the winter time, the manatees will come up into the springs and they close it down to swimming. This video was shot at the end of May and we were both very happy that the swimming was open because it was already very hot and humid. After a nice little soak, it was time to head back to the boat and continue on our way. One thing that we found very interesting about Tiny Houseboat Adventures is that all of the boats are equipped with a tracking device. This not only gives them the opportunity to make sure that you're going in the right direction, but it also gives them the chance to recommend some awesome spots for you to see as well. Just up the river a ways from Blue Springs is a spot called the Tunnel of Trees. 
This narrow waterway was actually an old logging canal that was dug way back in the 1800s. But nowadays, it's just a really pretty spot to explore. I'm not gonna lie, when I first saw how narrow it was, I was a little bit intimidated. After all, I had only been a captain for a couple hours at this point. But luckily, this boat is quite nimble and I was able to make it through without a scratch. The spot was absolutely gorgeous. And with my newfound boat driving confidence, we didn't hesitate to go back through it one more time to get back to the main channel. If you end up taking out one of these tiny houseboats and you are confident in your driving abilities, we definitely think that this is one of the stops that you should hit. We are now back out on the main channel and it's time to start figuring out where we were going to be setting up camp for the night. But along the way, we needed to stop for gas. One thing that is really important to take note of is that there aren't any gas stations to the north of the harbor where we picked up the boat. So if you plan on exploring in that direction, you really need to prepare ahead of time and make sure you have plenty of gas. As we pulled away from the gas dock and continued on our way, we got word of a stowaway and we found these apple snail eggs stuck to the side of our boat. Luckily for them, we showed mercy and let them join us for the remainder of the ride. Before we left the harbor, Rick told us about a great place to camp out for the night. So we made our way all the way back past the harbor and into more beautiful narrow waterways. And that's when we ran into a small problem. Our original plan was to head down a small river known as the Highland Park Run. That would meet up with the Ziegler Dead River, which would take us to that night's camping spot. This area is absolutely gorgeous. And as we got a little bit further in, the water was as smooth as glass. This gave us incredible reflections of the Spanish moss covered trees and the clouds above. And when you mix the scenery with the reggae music that V was playing on her Bluetooth speaker, you have one of the most relaxing moments that I can remember. Things were going amazing and we were getting closer and closer to that night's campsite. But that's unfortunately when we had to make a change of plans. One thing that's really interesting about these waterways is that they are constantly changing. There are floating plants here like lily pads, dollar weed, and hyacinth that are constantly on the move. And on this particular day, they had blocked the path. So we ended up dropping anchor for a little bit while we waited for further instructions. It wasn't long before we received another message from Rick with one more camping option. You aren't allowed to drive these boats at night and sunset was quickly approaching. So we cranked it up to that blistering seven miles an hour and got to the other spot as fast as we could. And I must say, this other spot did not disappoint. Soon after we arrived, the large boat next to us pulled its anchor and took off and we had the entire place to ourselves. After a nice dinner, we rushed inside because the biting bugs were starting to come out. And with that, day one had come to a close. I usually like to sleep to the sound of a white noise machine, but little did I know, this river provides its own. I have no clue what was making all that noise, but they sounded like the little aliens from Toy Story. If you know what it was, please let us know in the comments below. Either way, we slept like a baby. We were well rested and ready for day two. As the sunlight crept into the windows, we woke up bright and early and ready to go. V yanked up the anchor and we were on the move again. Once again, we had quite a bit of ground that we wanted to cover. Our goal for the day was that we wanted to make it all the way up to Delion Springs. Along the way, we would have to cross a large lake known as Lake Woodruff, as well as crossing a somewhat nerve-wracking part of Spring Garden Lake. We did take one detour along the way to follow this airboat because I wanted to see if he was going somewhere cool. But if you know anything about airboats, you know that they can go places that most other boats can't. Eventually, he dove into a large field full of lily pads and there is no way that we could follow him. As we cruise through some beautiful scenery, here are a couple fun facts about the St. John River. It is one of just a couple rivers in the United States that actually flows north rather than south. Another thing that you may have noticed about the water is that it is very dark. If you saw last week's video about our adventure with Catboat Escapes, you know exactly where this water gets its color from. 
If you haven't seen that video yet, I'll leave a link to it in the upper corner so you can watch that one too. As we reach Lake Woodruff, I will give you the condensed version of where the water gets its color from. As the plant life on the shore and in the water decays, it releases tannins into the water and colors it somewhat similar to tea. After what felt like a small eternity at 7 miles an hour, we finally made it across Lake Woodruff. The lake lit out into yet another beautiful river section. As we made our way through the narrow passageways, we were not only keeping an eye out for stumps and random river debris, but also for manatees. They aren't very fast or good at getting out of the way, and unfortunately it's not uncommon to see them with propeller strikes in their sides. And here we are at the sketchiest part of the trip. To get to De Leon Springs, you need to take a very specific path around this island. If you deviate from the path, you can either get stuck on a sandbar or you can break the engine. Whichever one you do, you're going to lose your $300 deposit. The entire crossing, V was checking our coordinates and I was steering and we didn't even think about trying to film it. I'm happy to say that we made it successfully and here we are at De Leon Springs. This is another beautiful spot and thankfully it was worth all of the stress of the crossing. Stay tuned for a future video where we will go over all of the amenities that De Leon Springs has to offer. We would love to go back here and spend more time when we don't have to worry about finding a good camping spot for the boat. So after a quick front flip, we headed back to the boat because we had to cross that sketchy part one more time. Just as we got to the boat, we noticed that there was a medium sized gator that had come to say hi to us. We were really surprised because we only saw five of them the entire time that we were on the boat. And we also had a run in with another tiny houseboat. I think that somewhere between the luck that the Ospreys brought us and V's awesome navigational skills, we made it back across the sketchy part without any incident. We needed to have the boat return the next morning by 10 o'clock and it had to be gassed up, so we ended up cruising back most of the way. That way it would be a shorter drive and we wouldn't have to get up so early. We ended up finding another epic spot for our last night on the boat. And we wrapped up day two with a little dance party. We were expecting another night of nature's white noise machine and it leveled up this time. The storm must have moved some things around during the night because the plant life around us had all moved and we had hooked a giant tree with our anchor. Thankfully we got unstuck and we were underway with plenty of time to spare. If this looks like an adventure that you would like to try, V and I recommend doing at least two nights on the boat. This will give you enough time to get around and see a lot of cool things. We ended up driving about 60 miles over the course of the two days, which is not too bad when you consider the speed that we were traveling at. We wrap things up by hitting the gas station that is just on the other side of the bridge from the harbor. And we even had a greeter welcome us when we got back to the car. We'd like to send a huge thank you out to Tiny Houseboat Adventures. This was a really fun time. If you enjoy our adventures, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because those are the best things that you can do to support this channel. Check us out on Instagram at thatadventurelife underscore official. And for all the information about the tiny houseboats and other awesome things to do in Florida, head on over to thatadventurelife.com.